This took a turn and I didn't like it. It was interesting, <laughs> let's just leave it at that. The further that I get into this, the more confused I am. <laughs> and I enjoyed my time reading them. So over the past couple of years, I've noticed that I have not been enjoying thrillers as much as I used to. And I wanna put a focus this year on rediscovering my love of thrillers, but also trying to work out what my taste in thrillers is now, because my taste has changed quite a a lot and I think it's a natural process that we all go through. I have been reading thrillers for around 10 years. The first adult thriller that I can remember reading was Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn and I read that around the time that the movie came out in it was 2013 or 2014, basically a decade ago. So it's not really surprising that my taste has changed since then. I know that if I were to read Gone Girl for the first time today, I would not enjoy it as much as I did back then. So yeah, in this video and in possibly future videos, I might turn this into a vlog series depending on how this first video goes. But in this video, I am gonna be reading three thrillers across different subgenres. And I'm gonna be analyzing what works for me, what doesn't work for me. And hopefully we'll also find a five stars. I'm not gonna put pressure on myself to find a five star thriller. I just wanna go through different subgenres and try and pinpoint what I want to be reading in thrillers at this time in my life. So uh, the first thriller that I'm going to be picking up is actually a popular new release. I thought it might be quite interesting to read this first and then from there read more um, or less popular thrillers. But the first thriller that I'm going to be reading is The Teacher by Frieda McFadden. Frieda McFadden is a very popular thriller author at the moment and I have read two of her books. I read The Housemaid and The Housemaid's Secret and they were okay. <laughs> I gave them both I think around three stars. I thought they were really fast paced and entertaining and exactly what I wanted to be reading at the time but nothing that really stood out to me. The Teacher is a domestic thriller about a teacher surprisingly who is married to another teacher and you also also get the perspective of a student who goes to their school and she is a student of both of theirs. This is also quite a new release, it only came out in February so I haven't really heard many reviews for it and I'm going in with an open mind. I have the audiobook for this because it's available through Everend, not Scribd as I keep calling it. <laughs> Scribd is now called Everend but the audiobook is available there. Interested to see how this goes because I have noticed I do tend to enjoy thrillers when I listen to them on audio, especially like popular thrillers. This also has quite a simplistic and conversational writing style, which I think works really well as an audiobook. So that's the first book that I'm going to be picking up. I have already started this. I'm around 20% of the way through, but I don't have many thoughts yet. So I'll wait until the halfway point before I give a proper update. The next book that I'm going to be picking up is Bullet Train by Kataro Isaka. This is an older thriller. I don't know exactly when it came out, but I know that it was adapted into a movie. And it's about five assassins who all board this same train. And it's about who gets out alive. I think I'm pretty sure that there's a connection between them all. Maybe they've all been given a similar assignment or there's a link between their assignments. I don't know too much, but I'm excited to give this a go. This is also a translated fiction. It was originally published in Japanese. Then the final book that I'm going to be picking up is Rabbits by Terry Miles, which is about an alternative reality game. I haven't heard many people talking about this. So again, I'm going to be going in with pretty much zero expectations, but I tend to enjoy thrillers when I don't know that much about them. So that is the case actually for all three of these books. I know enough about them but I haven't heard like anything that could even remotely be considered a spoiler. So that is the final book that I'm going to be reading in this vlog. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these and what you thought of them and 
yeah, I think if I was to make a prediction, I reckon Bullet Train is going to be the book that works the best for me and that I give the highest rating. And then maybe The Teacher is going to be the lowest because I don't tend to love domestic thrillers. But we'll see how it goes. Thank you for watching this vlog and I will catch up with you once I have some reading updates. Hello everyone. Happy Saturday. It is coming up on 11 o'clock and I thought I would check in with you with some thoughts on on The Teacher by Frieda McFadden because I read some more of this at the gym earlier. I'm now 45% of the way through and I'm having mixed feelings about it so far. It's very addictive and I'm enjoying the listening experience. I want to know what's going to happen so my intrigue is high but also I feel like I've worked out exactly what direction this is going in. I could be wrong obviously I'm just speculating here and I'm not going to go into my thoughts and theories because I don't want to go into spoilers but I feel like I've worked out what some of the twists are going to be. I still have questions so it's not all bad <laughs> but if it does go in the direction that I think it's going in I don't think I'm going to like it. This is following a couple of characters. We have Eve who is a teacher and she's married to another teacher called Nate. They are unhappily married. She isn't happy with the way that he's treating her. She thinks that he doesn't give her enough attention and that he doesn't really love her. They both teach at the same high school and they are perceived very differently by their students. So everyone thinks that she's an ice queen and that she's too strict, whereas he is the fun, cool teacher who everyone likes and that all the girls fancy. The other perspective that we're following is a student at this school called Addie and she is seen as a troublemaker her unfairly I think there was an incident the previous year that she was caught up in and she got blamed a lot for what happened again unfairly in my opinion she's being bullied quite badly and I don't like her reading those parts I don't like reading about the bullying that she's going through and how she doesn't have many friends it feels really uncomfortable and it's probably deliberately that way but I am really concerned about the way that her character is being handled and I'm concerned about the direction that her character is going to be taken in. Obviously I don't know for definite so at the moment I'm cautiously thinking this is going to be a three stars but it could go either way. I do like the way that Frieda McFadden writes plot twists that are usually really surprising. There was some stuff that happened in The Housemaid and The Housemaid's Secret that I didn't see come in and I feel like I should have. I feel like she does a really good job of making you feel like you can't trust any characters and keeping you on your toes. So uh, feeling mixed things about this at the moment, but we're going to see how it goes. I'm going to try and finish this today because I only have about two and a half hours left of the audiobook and I'm going to go into town now to grab myself some breakfast. So I'm going to listen to this on the way to and from town. And then I also have some chores this afternoon where I can listen to an audiobook. I also need to film my February wrap up at some point this weekend. I might try and film it this afternoon but it's really dark and grey and miserable outside. It's raining and I can hear the rain so it's pretty bad but yeah hopefully today is going to be a productive day. I'm currently reading another book on my Kindle but that's not for this vlog. It's not for any vlog. It's a book that I want to read because I want to read it. <laughs> so yeah once I finish that book on my Kindle I'm going to make a start on one of the other thrillers that I want to read for this vlog. But yeah to some Summarise mixed feelings about the teacher so far, but we'll see how it goes in the second half.
So I finished The Teacher by Frieda McFadden and I don't want to sound dramatic, but I think this is one of the worst books that I have ever read. I'm really tempted to give it one star because I can't think of anything positive to say about it other than it was addictive and I couldn't put it down, but that was mostly for all the wrong reasons. I think I said earlier that I thought I'd worked out what direction it was going in. Oh, just lost my glasses there. I was kind of right, but also I wasn't like at all. Was not expecting a lot of the stuff that happened in this book. And I really wish I'd been filming my reactions because I was making some faces. <laughs> I listened to this as I was going into town and people were probably looking at me thinking, what is wrong with this girl? Cause I was making some faces. I was visibly reacting and it was not good. This was gross. <laughs> That's the only word I can think of. I didn't enjoy it and I am gonna collect myself and maybe update you again in the morning once I've had some time to process my thoughts. But yeah, this took a turn and I didn't like it. So it's been a few days since I finished reading The Teacher by Frieda McFadden and I wanted to try and explain in more detail why I hated this book so much. Because as you will have seen in my last update, I was so angry at this book. I haven't felt this angry at a book in a really long time. I literally can't remember the last time I gave a book one star, but that's what I'm doing with this book. I hated it so much. And I think what it came down to is I felt deeply uncomfortable reading this. When I pick up a book like this, I expect it to be fun and entertaining. That's why Frieda McFadden is such a popular author because she writes these thrillers that are really fast paced and addictive and gripping and yes this was fast paced and addictive and gripping. I should have known based on the synopsis that I wasn't gonna like this book. It actually says in the blurb that part of this book is about an inappropriate student-teacher relationship. It gave me the ick, it made me feel really uncomfortable and that wasn't the feeling that I wanted from a book that's meant to be fun and entertaining. It felt too casual and I know that it's fiction and I know that the characters were meant to be unlikable and I was meant to feel uncomfortable but I just didn't enjoy reading it. Aside from that I also thought this had way too many twists and that's a trend that I've noticed in a lot of thrillers recently is that it feels like authors are trying to squeeze in as many twists as they possibly can and I am fed up of getting whiplash. <laughs> so yeah not the start of the vlog that I was hoping for however I have now moved on to my next read and that is Bullet Train by Kataro Isaka. This is described as a dark and satirical thriller and it's about a group of people all of these different people they're strangers who have boarded this train traveling from Tokyo. It says on the back why are they all on the same train and who will reach the end of the line alive. So very intrigued about this one. I will give you a proper update once I'm a little further in, but so far it feels really fast paced and I am intrigued. <laughs> So I have been making good progress with Bullet Train. I'm currently around a third of the way through, I reckon. So I'm on page 167 and so far I'm really enjoying it. I'm a little confused because I don't think this is actually a thriller, but there's a little blurb on the back, like a little review by The Guardian that describes it as a high octane thriller thoroughly enjoyable and I agree that it's thoroughly enjoyable but I would agree more with this little blurb on the front that says a locked room crime drama played out at 200 miles per hour like this feels more like a crime drama rather than a thriller and it might get more thrilling the further that I get into it but not much has really happened yet it's mostly been introducing us to these different characters and we're piecing together this puzzle of how they're all connected 
did. It has this tone where it's not really taking itself too seriously. It's not quite a comedy, but it does have that satirical edge. And there's characters that are being sarcastic, or there's characters that are doing stuff without really thinking, and other characters are looking at them thinking, what are you doing? <laughs> there's this one guy in particular who is a kind of assassin. I would describe him as more of a thief, but he accepts these jobs that always end up going wrong. He feels like the most unluckiest man in the world and he is on this train to do a job that ends up going wrong. <laughs> the other characters include a guy who is looking for revenge against the person who seriously injured his son. Then there's also these two guys who were hired to rescue this kid that was kidnapped and retrieve the ransom money and then return the kid and the ransom money to the kid's father. I hope that all made sense but yeah there's a few different characters that were following and so far I'm not preferring one or two perspectives over the other. Like it's not like I'm getting to a chapter and thinking oh no we're back to this person again like I'm enjoying them all equally. So yeah I'm very excited to read some more of this tonight. I am hoping to get past the halfway point because it's currently Wednesday so if I make good progress on this tonight I could try and finish it tomorrow and then read another book over the weekend. I'm 100 pages from the end now and I can definitely see why this is described as an adrenaline thriller. Adrenaline thriller because the action has definitely picked up in the second half. I'm still enjoying it but I can't help but find myself wishing that it were a little bit more serious but that's really unfair because it's not meant to be a serious thriller. It's meant to be satirical and a little bit ridiculous. I can picture how this would work as a movie. I haven't seen the adaptation yet, but I'm definitely interested in it because I know that Brad Pitt is in it, but the character that he plays is not the character that I thought he'd be playing. So that's interesting. But yeah, I'm going to read the last 100 pages tonight. It's feeling like a four stars at the moment because even though I'm enjoying it in the moment, I don't think this is going to stick with me long term. And I feel like that should be the main criteria for me giving a thriller five stars. Stars. There's thrillers that I read a few years ago that I gave four stars in the moment, but I'm still thinking about them. And I knew at the time that I probably would still be thinking about them. But yeah, this is feeling like a four stars, as I said, and I'm interested to see how it wraps up. It's going in a clear direction. Most of the plot, I mean, yeah, pretty much all of the plot takes place on this train that's going towards a destination. And it has this structure where they're stopping on the way. Like, I'll see if I can find actually in the beginning there's like a map of where they're going to it's not really a map <laughs> but there's a diagram showing all the different stops on the way there you go so you can see they start in Tokyo and then they're going to Morioka so uh, liking the setting for this but I'm interested to see how it wraps up because if it's too ridiculous and over the top then I don't think I'm gonna love that but I have enjoyed the journey that we've been on to get to the ending pun intended <laughs> Saturday and I have a few reading updates that I need to go through with you. The first is I finished Bullet Train by Kataro Osaka and I liked this. I'm gonna give it four stars. I feel like the ending could have been a little bit stronger but ultimately I don't think I was ever gonna give this five stars. As soon as I started it I realised that the tone was probably a little too satirical for me. I think for me to really really love a thriller and give it five stars it 
needs to be the kind of thriller that you're meant to take seriously and a lot of thrillers that I've been picking up especially in the last few years have been thrillers that are meant to be fun and that you're not meant to take seriously and I think that's why I've not been enjoying thrillers as much recently because the tone just doesn't work for me. I would still recommend this if you're looking for a thriller that has a lot of adrenaline and that is a little bit absurd with some quirky characters. One of the characters in this for example is obsessed with Thomas the Tank Engine. It was interesting, <laughs> let's just leave it at that. I believe this is part of the series. I think each book in this series follows different assassins that are part of this underground criminal network. I'm not sure if they continue on from each other. I feel like they might be more of companion novels and my partner does have the next book in this series. I think he bought it last year. I can see it up there. <laughs> so maybe I would pick that up if I'm in the mood for this type of thriller in the future. I have now made a start on the next book that I'm reading for this vlog and that is Rabbits by Terry Miles. I am enjoying this so far. I'm only around 60 pages in so I've only read the first few chapters but already I like the writing and I like how it feels confusing. Everything feels very mysterious. This is basically about a game and the details like I said are still a bit hazy but essentially this game has been going on for years. Some people are obsessed with trying to find out what this game actually is. No one knows anyone who's won this game. There are rumours but anyone who's taken part in this game has been sworn to secrecy I think. There's a lot of secrecy surrounding this game. All I've worked out so far is that it's to do with recognising patterns and seeing a connection connections where there shouldn't be connections. Kind of giving me Matrix vibes which is a movie that I enjoy so hopefully I enjoy this as well. Our main character is called Kay and they are part of a group of people who are obsessed with finding out about this game and Kay is approached by someone called Ben. No that's a lie. <laughs> this person is called Alan and he was rumoured to be a winner of this game. He's this billionaire and he approached is our main character Kay to say that there is something wrong with the game and he needs Kay's help. That's about as far as I've got so far but I am definitely intrigued and I'm excited to carry on reading this. It says on the back that it's an electrifying compulsive read set in the world of the hit podcast so I think Terry Miles is a podcast host but I've never heard of this podcast before so hopefully that doesn't affect my enjoyment. It doesn't feel like the fastest read but that could just be because I've only just started it and it's mostly been setting the scene and introducing us to this game and this main character but uh, things could pick up once I get further in. I'm actually heading out in a few hours because it's Mother's Day tomorrow and I'm going to see my mum tonight with my sisters so I'm probably not going to get much reading done today unless I read before I head out but I'm hoping to spend most of tomorrow reading. I was going to film this weekend but honestly I can't be bothered <laughs> so yeah uh, tomorrow it's probably going to be a nice cosy reading day and I'm hoping to read a good chunk of rabbits. <laughs> Yesterday was such a nice day. It was like my perfect Sunday. I woke up and went for a run which I love doing at the weekend because it means that I feel refreshed and like I've been productive <laughs> for the day. I then had to do a food shop because we had no food in the house but otherwise I spent the rest of the day relaxing and reading and we also watched the film Bullet Train. I found out that it's on now TV and coincidentally Now TV sent me a voucher to get three months for a pound per month so took advantage of that and watched Bullet Train. It was okay, I think I still preferred the book even though the film did some things better than the book. I felt like the tone from the book was captured quite well in the film and it worked better I think as a film in terms of the humour. Lemon and Tangerine were still my favourite characters and I liked how they kept Lemon's obsession <laughs> with Thomas the Tank Engine. Joey King character wasn't done well in my opinion. In the book they had more of a prominent role. In the book they were also male but that didn't bother me at all. I never have an issue with filmmakers changing the gender of a character. I actually thought it made sense for this character in particular because in the book they're meant to be this innocent looking teenager. Obviously in the book you get the character's thoughts and you could see that they were doing stuff just because they wanted to see if they could get away with it and that wouldn't have translated well I don't think onto the screen so I understood why they had to come up with motivations for why this character 
was doing certain things. In the movie, it was very much an action movie type ending, whereas in the book, it just kind of ended. So yeah, mixed feelings on that. I think I would recommend it, but I personally preferred the book. In terms of reading updates, I am now around 140 pages into Rabbits by Terry Miles. And I am really liking this. For some reason, I'm reading it quite slowly, but I feel like that's just my mood at the moment. I don't want to be rushing any books because my brain is struggling to concentrate. Weirdly, this book is about seeing connections. And on page 64, I saw the name Griff, <laughs> which I never see in books. Obviously, Griff isn't my real name. My real name is Sam. It was really strange. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I am really liking this so far. I like how this is about obsession. And it's really delving into that. I think it's doing a really good job of showing how people become obsessed with this game. I'm a little bit obsessed with this game. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, there are all of these people who are trying to find out as much as possible about this game. And it's taken over their lives. The main character is not reliable because there's been times in the past where they've fallen down this rabbit hole and they've started ignoring everything that's going on around them. My battery just died, which is very annoying. But as I was saying, this is really a book about obsession. These people know that there are risks by taking part in this game. People have died and no one even knows what you get for winning. But it's an obsession that they just can't walk away from. And I really hope that the stakes feel a little bit higher in this because it has been quite slow to build up. But I'm very, very intrigued and I'm hoping to get past the halfway point tonight. The further that I get into this, the more confused I am. <laughs> and at the moment, it's not so much a bad thing because I've still got about 150 pages left. So we might still get answers, but I'm really hoping this doesn't have like an ambiguous ending where everything is left open. Depending on how it's handled, that might be okay. But I really hope we get some answers because I am gripped at the moment. The further that I get into this, the more anxious the main character is feeling. And that's making me feel anxious. I also quite like how we don't know, or at least I don't think it's been mentioned what gender the main character is. Just a heads up, there's also been quite a few pop culture references in this. And I don't know whether that's been done deliberately because the whole point of this game is that you're meant to see connections between things. And the more pop culture references there are, then as the reader, you're gonna see more connections. For example, it mentioned the book June earlier, and obviously the second movie has just come out. So I've been seeing that everywhere and it's really weird seeing it in a book. There's been a few occasions like that where pop culture references have been mentioned and it relates to stuff that I've seen recently in real life. And then there's also probably been pop culture references that have been mentioned that I haven't seen in real life, but that other people might have. It's just really an interesting experience. I am really liking this. I just hope that the ending ends strong. It is time to wrap up this vlog because I have now finished Rabbits by Terry Hayes. No, Terry Miles. <laughs> My partner has just finished reading a book by Terry Hayes and I keep getting the two authors mixed up. But this is Rabbits by Terry Miles. I have now finished this and I think I'm going to give it four stars. Might change my mind in six months time or however long <laughs> if I find that I'm not remembering this or if it's not sticking with me. But I enjoyed my time reading this and I would recommend it if you like this kind of thing. By that I mean if you enjoy thrillers that focus on technology or that have some kind of gaming aspect, I think this would work for a lot of people. It has this hazy quality where there were parts in this book where I was very confused and I wasn't sure if I was understanding everything, but I was. I was following everything that the characters were doing. I think it's deliberately written in a way where things are meant to be unclear and where you're meant to be constantly questioning stuff. And yeah, I did like the atmosphere in this. It did feel a little bit repetitive and I also think that the scope could have been scaled back a little bit and that would have allowed the book to be around 50 to 100 pages shorter. And I think that would have helped with the pacing because towards the end, I could feel my attention starting to drift. So even though I was reading it quickly because I wanted to find out how things were gonna be wrapped up, I wasn't as invested in the ending as I was in the beginning. So yeah, four stars, maybe more like a 3.5 or a 3.75, but I would recommend it to certain people. If you like the TV show Black Mirror as well, then there were certain aspects of this that gave me similar feelings to some of those episodes, especially the ones that do focus more on 
technology rather than morality. As I said, that does bring us to the end of this reading vlog, and I think my main takeaway from this vlog is that I do still like thrillers, but maybe I need to pick up more or less well-known thrillers like Bullet Train and Rabbits. I really enjoyed both of these, and even though they weren't five stars, I would recommend them to certain people, and I enjoyed my time reading them. As I was saying, I don't think I'm gonna stop reading like the super popular and super hyped thrillers. I think I can still enjoy those. However, filming this vlog has confirmed that uh, I need to pick up lesser well-known thrillers and thrillers that are maybe a little more outside my comfort zone or that are just not talked about as much. I really want to pick up more literary thrillers and I also want to pick up more crime thrillers because one of my favourite thrillers that I've read so far this year was The Devotion of Suspect X by Kigo Higashino which is translated fiction and again I think I need to pick up more translated thrillers because I think the setting of a thriller really really impacts on my enjoyment. Maybe I could do a whole vlog around reading translated thrillers. Let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. But yeah, I am gonna wrap up this reading vlog here. Thank you for watching if you made it this far. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of the books that I talked about in this reading vlog and if you have read any five-star thrillers recently. Let me know if you have any recommendations but yeah otherwise don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me but otherwise I will see you next time. Bye!